and uh, and Petchorin embodies this as well. I mean, as this as this kind of hero who's who's also an anti-hero, as a, a young, virile, kind of wild, almost amoral uh, character. He seems to harmonize with with the idea of this of this almost overgrown romantic landscape. I think um, the whole uh, Petchorin does does at one point say that he he he. Um, had gone to the Caucasus to seek freedom and adventure to get away from sort of the humdrum, strict rules of society, everything that he felt restricted him. Um, but he um, even there actually felt bored and felt disillusioned. And so at, at, at one point when Maxim Maximich meets him later, uh, I think he says he's going off to Persia because he's expecting that maybe he'll find the sort of adventure and the sort of uh, he's looking to be to be interested and stimulated by life but all he can find is sort of essentially boredom with all the all the goings on equally i mean that's how he falls in love with he at one point he falls in love with a tribal maiden called bella and he thinks i think at the beginning of that love affair that he's finally found a, a, a girl who can, will fascinate him and interest him because she's so exotic and she's so foreign and she's so different. Soon enough, he tires of her as well. And I, I think this is just a person who's looking for something to keep him interested, something, to, a, a place, a life that will, that, that will alleviate the malaise he feels. And yet even he says that at a certain point, the whistling of bullets overhead become, becomes just as boring as anything else. So I guess he's he's pretty hard to satisfy, I would say. Well, how does how does Lermontov's own enterprise in, in writing this novel represent a kind of break from tradition? It's been called the first psychological novel, the first major Russian novel, the first novel in some sense. This is all a bit uh, stretching the truth a bit. But tell us what what the context is for this novel and how it was received. The novel actually was. Um, published in separate parts originally. Um, what is extraordinary about this novel and what in fact makes it very sophisticated as a sort of early Russian novel is the fact that it's written from several points of view. So you have lots of views, at a, lo- lots of different points of view uh, uh, onto a character and which gives him a lot more of a 3D effect than I think you'd had previously. It certainly isn't the first Russian novel. The first Russian novel is, a well, there's a debate about which is the first Russian novel. Something probably published in about 1763 may have been the first Russian novel by someone called Emin. But these novels, were the novels that predate Lermontov's novels were very much romantic novels and quite often a, a del- derivative of European work. Whereas Lermontov's work is a very prismatic portrait, and which is which is what really distinguishes it. Because nobody really, nobody would have, it would have I don't think it would have occurred to anyone to a write a novel from three points, from three or four points of view. Uh, b his novel is not chronological in the slightest, which I think is also highly unusual. So the book, in fact, skips around. It doesn't matter. Um, you wouldn't. You don't really notice it as you read. You sort of just getting a picture of him and his different adventures. It doesn't really matter what order they're read in exactly. But what's sophisticated about it is this very sort of multifaceted view of a of a character both from the inside and from the outside, because, of course, part of the, part of the book is, is Pichoran's journals. I think its, it, it's immediate predecessor is, is um, Yevgeny Anegin, Pushkin's Eugene Anegin, uh, which is, whose, char- whose central character is of the sort of same ilk as Pichoran. But that's a very different piece of work. A, that's, that's a poem. It's a novel in verse, and um, it's not told from the various points of view like uh, Lermontov's novel is. So I think Lermontov really did something quite extraordinary with his book and certainly ushered in the beginning of the psychological novel because there just wasn't anything like it before. And I think uh, there's many of the most famous Russian writers 
of expressed admiration for Lermontov and what he did. There's a fair amount of dueling in A Hero of Our Time. And in fact, the cover of the Penguin Classics edition shows a portrait shot through with bullet holes. What role does dueling play in the novel? And, and can you talk a little bit about how Petchorin's climactic duel might be said to have anticipated one of Lermontov's own? Dueling does play a major part in the novel. One of the most exciting passages to read and indeed was to translate. It's, it, it's, it's a great turning point, actually. It's, a, it's an extremely intricate situation that plonks Pechorin into the middle of a duel at a certain point. In fact, he was largely the mastermind behind the duel. Uh, uh, Pechorin so, duels with, uh, with a character who he has gone to great lengths to uh, ridicule. I don't know whether to ruin it. Am I allowed to say what happens? I can't tell. I'm not sure. I, I don't want to. I don't want to ruin the story because really, it's very exciting when you read it. <laughs> but you are talking about a classic, after all. So you can assume that people uh, are, are very familiar with with the novel. <laughs> okay, fine. Well, let's let's just come out with it and say Pechorin doesn't die. In real life, Lermontov, uh, a couple of years after or very soon after A Hero of Our Time emerged in its full full sense. Lermontov also entered into a duel with a man called Martinov, also in the Caucasus, also, I think, in the exact same town where the duel in his novel was set, which is Pitigorsk, which is a spa town, which where people, you know, Russian aristocrats used to go and take the waters for, for various illnesses. Pechorin, uh, Lermontov goes there, uh, is, is actually exiled to, to the Caucasus a couple of times, but ends up down there, also has a duel based on some of the same circumstances in that I understand Lermontov was a terribly cruel tease. I think that's probably too, that's not even strong enough a word. I think he was quite cruel to people and was, was responsible for a great deal of mockery. Anyway, mocked this man and there was something to do with this man's sister, I think, insulted his sister, perhaps, or in fact, maybe led her on, which all of these, all of this, the whole situation smacks of his novel. So Lermontov goes into the duel. Um, he thinks in advance that they've agreed secretly that they won't fire at each other, that they'll fire into the air. So Lermontov shoots first, fires into the air, and misses his opponent. But apparently the opponent wasn't interested in these, this, this little agreement and shot Lermontov dead. And so the poet died. Uh, there's one account that remains of a man who witnessed Lermontov's death in this duel. And it's just astounding to hear the circumstances and, and relate them so, uh, so directly to what, uh, to what was written um, in, in A Hero of Our Time. I also wanted to talk a little bit about this being a novel that that young people respond to and how it represents kind of an anthem for the spirit of youth and liberation. It's certainly an adventure novel. Well, I mean, I, in the sense that because of its, its, its exotic setting, and I think... I mean, it definitely has a sort of James Dean quality to it. That would be that would be certain. I think maybe there's probably a cinematic equivalent. I'm trying to think what it would be, but I feel like there's an American movie somewhere that has. In the Company of Men, of course, Neil Neil LeBute has written the foreword to this edition, and I, I approached him because it, because when as, as I was reading a hero of our, our time, it reminded me of In the Company of Men. And uh, sure enough, when I went to Neil LeBute, he, he was immediately intrigued by the idea. It turns out he hadn't read the novel, but I'd heard a lot about it. And when he finally did read the novel, he did identify with it and wound up writing a very personal uh, and wonderful forward to your translation. I, I, I'm sure that Mr. LeBute... That he, I think he will have identified with Pajoran quite a lot himself, even. This has been great, Natasha. Thank you. Thank you to Natasha Randall for joining us on today's program. Mikhail Lermontov's A Hero of Our Time is available wherever books are sold and at www.penguin.com.